code on this computer. Okay, go. Good evening, everyone. This year, um, this time we're just, oh, welcome to Lud Hangout. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I've led one of these. This week, one month, whatever, okay. we're doing book two and book three for the um, Witch Boy, for the Witch Boy series, Hidden Witch and Midwinter Witch. Uh, we read the first one back in December. Uh, most of us enjoy it, so we continued with the series. And so here we are doing these. I really loved them. I really enjoyed them. I, I really can't wait for the next one to come out. She's one of my favorites now. So that's me and Karina. Nice. <laughs> um, I liked number two better than number three for reasons that we can get into. I think I gave this five and I gave this four. It was like two hours ago. Why can't I remember what happened two hours ago? Um, yeah. They are really nice, quick little reads. Like I'm pretty sure these are intended for middle grade. Yes. I would mm, I got no, that impression. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like grades four to seven, yeah. four to six kind yeah, of age group. Like yeah. Um, so they are really nice, cute little reads. Um, but I do like that there's some like more mature kind of things woven in there if you're looking for them. Yeah. Mel? <coughs> Uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed them. Um, is there more coming? Because I, I looked on Goodreads and there was nothing said there. Yeah, and I was like, this is three. Yeah, and I got the feeling actually that this finished off in a point where it was well-rounded. Um, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed them. A little sad to think that there might not be any more, but can also see that it was a good spot to finish everything off. I have no, every intention. No, don't dash my hopes and dreams. <laughs> there is more. <laughs> Um, and I have every intention of buying all three of them and giving them to my nephew for his birthday. Mm. Very good. Um, yeah, I quite enjoyed them as well. I did find like because they're made for younger kids, it was like very, very quick and easy, not like the nice depth that I sometimes like, but like that wasn't anything wrong with it. That's because of the audience it's written for. Um, I bought, after we read the first one and I was like, oh, this is actually primary school age suitable which a lot of the stuff we read isn't um so I was like oh good I'm gonna buy it for the for my school's library um and so I bought the other two for our library as well and read them but we haven't put them in the library yet so I, I would like I mean obviously the school year hasn't started yet and I haven't accessioned them yet um I actually did that job today so when school starts them, um, they'll be on the shelf and I'll be interested to see what the kids at school think of them. I think they'll be quite popular. Um, Are you going to put them on display? Yeah. We always put yeah. new books on display. When we buy sure. new books, they go out on a new books display. But Do I, you find that you don't need, like you have a small graphic novel section or are they in the general? No, yeah. I have a separate graphic novel section and I can't keep them on the shelf. I was about to say, do you find that you don't need to put them on new books because they just disappear anyway? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I put them on new books because we have a thing where they have to sit on the new book shelf for a week before anyone's allowed to borrow them. Yep. So that everyone gets a chance to come in and see what's there. Otherwise, like they get borrowed the minute they're on the shelf and then half the kids don't even know they exist so they go out there they stay there for a week and the kids are like oh but I really want it and I'm like it's a graphic novel just come in at lunchtime and you can read it in probably yeah. our lunchtime <laughs> yeah true and then you'll have done it and it won't matter but um but yeah so I'll, I'll have to get back to you guys about it but I think that it will do really well because graphic novels are very popular and especially this style of graphic novel is quite popular like um yeah anyway I'll get into that bit more later but yeah I quite enjoyed them. Kim? I really enjoyed I didn't get to read um The Hidden Witch unfortunately oh. I couldn't get my hands on it but I will be putting it on hold as soon as my library lets holds be put on it because they've Isn't just got the them in. One? No, no yeah, this, is. Is this, this is the second one um The Midwinter oh, Witch so is the third one. Midwinter 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 Midwinter. 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 Yeah I didn't get the third one sorry the second one we'd read. Yeah. I'm the like third did you book. sorry the first and the third and the, <laughs> the second one. of the two we read. I feel like that would be confusing. <laughs> yeah. It would be confusing. It would. Who's this person? As so many okay, characters yeah. it would be really weird. Yep so I really enjoyed this one too. Yep next. Good. <laughs> nah. Uh yeah, pretty much the same as the first one in terms of, like, um, the same thing Kirsten was saying about, like, you know, I like 
normally meatier subject matter, but this is not that kind of a book. Um, but I enjoyed these. I enjoyed them more than I did the first one, which I still really liked, but I got, I, I enjoyed these more. Um, I, I liked, there was more world building going on, not to like super great extent, but you got a better feel for what it's like in this world and how things might be working and, and sort of separated from other bits of what's going on. Um, I also liked the second one uh, better than the third one. Um, what else was I going to say? We can probably, yeah, we can talk about why. Um, yeah, and, and I hope, I certainly hope there's going to be more because I did not feel like Ariel's story is resolved at all satisfactorily yet. Mm. Yeah, if there's not another one, then I take it back. I don't love this one as much as I thought I did. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a four, not a five. If there's not more, th this is not enough for a finish. I'm done yeah. with you. You're Good. dead to me, Molly. Want to know more? <laughs> Don't say that you want her to write more, even if it's not this. <laughs> if I don't get more of this, she's dead to me. <laughs> Liv, I, 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 I would definitely say I would happily read whatever she chooses to write in the future, yeah. regardless of whether it's this or something else. Agreed. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, me, yeah. Um, no, I really enjoyed, I actually read all three because I didn't get around to reading the first one back, um, however long ago it was. So I read that all across that, um, meeting, that, um, birthday weekend, actually. Oh, Ooh. right. And that was really nice. I think because when we were just, like, for example, like waiting for you, Karina, um, in the mornings, I would just go, oh, I'll just read it. Just read it in the one session. I was like, oh, I like this. I, I've been reading too many grim things about climate change and oh. depression. <laughs> and this was sorely, sorely needed in my life, um, which just made me feel very happy inside. And yeah, I, I do prefer the second book more than the third one. I mean, they're all wonderful. Although, again, I wouldn't necessarily want to end at the third one. Mm. One just the, um, the introduction of, I can't remember her name, but um, introduction of the other witch. Ariel. Ariel, yeah. Um, worked really well and I, I like the sort of like teaming up and becoming friends and I felt so happy and warm inside. So yes, it was good. Yep. Yeah. So we all seem to be kind of on the same page about how it's not satisfactory the way that she's finishing things with Ariel if this is the last <laughs> one. I disagree. I actually thought it was perfectly fine to finish it there. Yes, I do mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I want to know more about her aunt and I want to yeah. know why she's evil. And that's yeah. why I gave it four because I felt that that whole her aunt turning up and then suddenly trying to kill her and everything was very too, quick. Too many unanswered questions. Yeah, I'm like, worried. I'm not worried about the unanswered questions. I just think that it could have been a little, like, I know that they're middle grade and I know that we aren't going to get a whole lot of depth from that. But I just feel like that could have had a little bit more meat to it. But mm. I feel like we didn't need the aunt. Like, I feel like we could have made this, we could have given it something else without bringing in the aunt for the last, you know, for the last two seconds and being like, she's good aunt and see you later. Like, no, yeah, it I could have just been more about it, her conflict of, do it I felt wanna, like a very yeah. empty like. I felt like actually it was kind of necessary because I felt like it sort of gave Ariel that moment of choosing to be there and choosing to be part of that part of that family, not just maybe I've got something else somewhere that I could go to at some point in time. And so for me, I agree with Karina that it could have been fleshed out a little bit more in terms of what was going on there, but Generally speaking, I thought that it was it was supposed to be to help Ariel make that final resolution decision, which is why I think that it's okay that it ends there. Yeah, agreed. Not that I'd say no to more. And I, I think just... the reason, the think the reason that um, it would be difficult to do more is because if she was to do more, she would probably have to take it in that direction and address the aunt and what's going on there. And I feel like it'd be a Harry Potter situation where the first few books are obviously good for like a younger age group. But once you get on, you've got to get into these much deeper, bigger questions. 
Especially and since there's that question mark over whether her aunt killed her mother, and that's quite heavy for mm. this. Yeah. But and I feel like we'd that. have to change the demographic then. Yeah. Not even just that, but I feel like um, I feel like Asta's mum like knows more about the family than she's letting on. Like I feel like she could have been like, I knew your mother or whatever it is. But mm. it feels like she feels like she's being partly shady. She definitely like recognised the name of the family. Yes. Like yeah. she knows something and doesn't want to tell Ariel. And I'm not saying she has to tell Ariel right now, but it just feels like. I feel like if there was more that she knew and she didn't tell her now after she's really just gone through this stage of, I didn't say anything, something went really badly wrong because I didn't say anything. I feel like that would be really shady of Asta's mum. What was her name? Holly to... To, um, to do that under those circumstances. So I, I feel like while I would definitely say she definitely knows more because she's a mother with quite young kids, of course she knows more. Um, but I don't feel like it was wrong for, for her not to tell her more about the world. However, if it was about Ariel and her family and it might in any, in any way put Ariel at risk for not knowing it, mm. um, I don't feel like she would have made that call after what had just happened. On the subject of her, I did really like the bit where she sat down with him and went, um, I fucked up, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Because you don't nice to see, see that very often. Parent. Yeah. Yes. A parent going, look, I made this choice. Here's the reason I made it. I thought I was doing the right thing, but obviously it wasn't the right thing and I'm sorry. And I've like just and like that was really refreshing because you don't see that very often. Um I a parent willing to go, yeah, parents are not perfect. We don't know everything. Sometimes we screw up. But when you screw up, you've got to go, I'm sorry, I screwed up mm. and admit to it and not be just like, well, I'm the parent and it doesn't matter what I, the choice I made is always right just because I'm the parent. Yeah. Okay. It was really good. I liked that a lot. I felt like that was something across the whole books so was really good. Um, like they haven't done it with the art, but even with, um, what was his name? Mikasa? Mikasi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mikasi? Like, Mikasi. Yeah. That, anyway, whatever his name was in the first book that was the big, big bad. Like, one of the things that she really sort of explores is the fact that nobody's really bad and mm. everybody can fuck up, even the people who you think are perfect and good. And it, it's just everybody's a mix and sometimes we make mistakes and the important thing is just to admit those mistakes and try to, to do better and to to be, be friends and it just I mm. think that's why like Liv's words were how pleasant it was to be in this and it was warm and cozy was because of everyone all of those has sort of the things. capacity for good mm. yep pretty much and everybody has the capacity to do something bad just as much I'll tell you what I want from uh future books mm -hmm. is I want I want to explore the um post uh witch boy world like you know going to the games and, and showing like hey you know what boys can be witches too and i want to see the repercussions that little of girl that. who said i want to be, yeah, a, shifter. be a shifter that's what like, i was just gonna say i want to book see now them. see that world i want shifter girl that's what i yeah, want yeah i would prefer that actually than the continuing on this story like do it, continue the world, but do it from different perspectives and things like that. That would be really cool as well. Especially since I feel like the first book was Asta's story mm. and then two and three weren't. Like yeah. they're still, you know, following Witch Boy, but it's not his trial yeah. anymore. No, mm. it was Ariel after that stage. That's kind of, I felt like why Ariel was a ne necessary bring in because it was Ariel's because story, from that story point. was done anyway. Yeah. Like he, he still has things to deal with, like what happened at the games and everything. But yeah. for the most part, he has overcome the big hurdle, which he's telling his family. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things I was saying to Nye that I really liked about the, the stories in general was that they were very nicely contained. Like you could have still finished at the end of number two and been okay with that conclusion as well. Like she really contains them very nicely. Mm. Um, so I, I thought that, that that was a really nice element too, because 
a lot of kids will put down a book and or like if they've borrowed it from the library, it might be a long time before they get the next one. So at mm-hmm. least they're not being left with cliffhangers that make them feel like, oh, my God, I need it now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, who, who enjoyed number two better than number three? I did. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. I, think I have did. no vote. I have no I, vote. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Because Kim didn't read them through yet. Yeah. I yeah. personally actually was pretty much thought they were on par. I'll tell you why I liked number two me. better. And then everyone everyone say why you like number two better. For me, it was the, uh, I'm a sucker for a redemption arc. And not that it was a big part of the story, but I thought it was an important part of the story with Mikasi. Um, like, and it wasn't the thing that I liked about it. It wasn't like the slate clean redemption that you get a lot of the time, which is one of the problems I had with Rise of Skywalker is like, they kind of go, Hey, Ben Solo, you're back and everything's good. And yeah, you've got to die, but also we're kind of forgiving a lot of Are stuff. You, did, did you double check that everyone has seen the movie before you Whoops. say things? No. Hello, Don't worry, Mr. I wasn't I'm really listening. about spoilers at me. Who <laughs> <laughs> so really hasn't seen it? it. <laughs> Forget what I said. Um, but it, it was like, <laughs> it worked for the character because he didn't, he wasn't evil, evil. He didn't set out to be bad. He kind of became corrupted by magic, not intentionally. And he, you know, at the end of he his life. He was a life, product of his environment. Ex- yeah. At, but he was still able to make that choice to do something good to, to somewhat redeem him, you know, his actions, even if he wasn't necessarily completely responsible for them. Um, and I like that kind of one where it's like, it's just that little message of, you know, change is possible. And, and even if you do bad things, depending on what they are, um, it's not necessarily the end of the world and you can, you can, you know, try and atone for some of that. And I also thought it was good and interesting how they address the fact that not everybody reacts the same way to the same circumstances. Like McCarthy actually went to like the extreme in terms of going, having been corrupted by the circumstances and his environment. Mm. Um, whereas, um, Asta. oh my God, his name, thank you, Asta. Asta, they specifically say that he was never that bad about it all. And it's important to sort of recognise that everybody's mileage about going through suffering and circumstances and how they react to all of it is going to be different. Like, Mm. these are the kinds of complexities that I enjoyed in this. Like, that they were there and you can pick up the different levels depending on, um, you know, how you read it and how old you Mm. are and what you can pick up. While still having a good story. (laughs) Sorry. Back on track. I get it. No, yeah. that was that was it for me. It's like I love redemption stories. It so I think Matt was asking why uh, other people thought that. Like, oh yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. I was. Yes. Yes. That's what but I meant by it. Wasn't yeah. sorry. that I like particularly latched on to something in book two? It was that book three was lacking in that one area that I wanted. Mm-hmm. I think for me, the reason I felt like they were fairly on par is that while I enjoyed both of them and found them both complete stories, I do felt like they were very much a flow on effect. And so for me, they sort of, I I felt like they were one story that had been broken into at the same Mm. time, even though there was no real cliffhanger in there. And so for me, I, I, I don't, I didn't feel that differentiation between them, but that's also probably because I did read them literally one after the other. Yeah, I did the same. I read them in one sitting, the two of them. I got home from school. Um, brought them home because I was waiting to go to school to get them Um, Mm -hmm. and then I came home one afternoon and I'm like I'm just gonna sit and have my cup of tea and I'm gonna read these books and I just read both of them in a row so they definitely sort of flow together in one story for me. I will admit though I did initially give them five stars and then just before the hangout I downgraded them to four because I realized that while I thoroughly enjoyed them and I really want to give them to my nephew they're not necessarily five star books for me. I did the same, but I think it's more because I, I, I do my star ratings based on my enjoyment, not based on my judgment of the quality. Exactly. If that makes exactly. sense. So, and I did enjoy them, but I'm not the target audience mm. and I didn't enjoy them as much as what I might enjoy something else that I would yeah. usually give five stars. Like if I look at the things I've given five stars, I'm like, well, I didn't like these as much as those things, but that's not because I thought there was something wrong with it. It's just that. Mm. It's I will say not 
written that, for me. Yeah. I would say that quality thing would come into play for me between a three and a four star, but never at a five star. Five star is about the it factor for me rather than mm -hmm. the quality question. So anyway. Yeah, I, ne I, never, I never consider quality because I, I, I'm like, that's, that's too much of a can of worms for me. If I'm like, I don't want to become, I'm not a literary reviewer. I'm not going to be, I'm, this isn't an English assignment. Like mm -hmm. when I rate things on Goodreads, it's purely about, did I really enjoy myself reading this? And so sometimes like, sometimes books I don't even give a rating to, like I'm, I'm reading Dark Emu now and I'm like, how do I rate that otherwise on quality rather than enjoyment? Because yeah, no, I get what you the right word. That. So sometimes when I'm like, I have that feel like that, like where I'm like, this is a really important book and it's a really quality book, but like, can you say you enjoyed? Did I like not be able to put it down? Like I'm like, I can't go to sleep until I finish this page. Well, no. So when it's like that, I'm just like, I just won't give it a rating. I'll just mark it as red. <laughs> so it's I did that with it. I did that so I was like, yeah, growing up Australian, uh, growing up Aboriginal, I was mm. like a hundred percent this, I'm not giving this a rating. I did there the same. No, there's no way I could rate that book. It was just, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, 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 if I was, if I was reviewing it and completely doing all my ratings based on like a, a measure of the quality of the writing, my reviews would all be very different to what they are. Yeah. But that's yeah, not right. how I do it. That's too. That, that was us digressing a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> well, I know. I think it's, you know, it's it's a good way to explain why we might give this book four stars and yet still say it's great. And I like I bought it for my school library because yeah. it's great for that age group. Yes. Um, you're you're buying it for your nephew because you think it's great for that age group, but then you wouldn't for yourself necessarily give it five stars. Can everyone see that? Matt, stop it! Why are you doing that? <laughs> oh, it's it just a little up? one. <laughs> it's fine. Let's call it Harry. He thinks it's so funny, but when he tried to pick one up the other day and it got on his hand, he, he screamed at <laughs> the girl. I have to remove him from the house. <laughs> are you going to show them as you catch it? I, do, show them as you catch it so then no, when you, when you drop it and, and scream, they all get to see it. <laughs> It's like a horror movie to for Mel, so no. Please don't. I'm okay with it. Um, Matt. <laughs> Actually, you know, you know what's funny? Is it, is Your actual name is blocking out the spider. Oh, not on mine, it's not. <laughs> I got you Mel, in a quarter of the screen. He's moved it away. I can't see it. It's gone. Thank you. I already had to deal with this week. I had a poisonous spider, sorry, a venomous, is it venomous poison? I don't know. Venomous. Whatever, a spider that can bite you and do damage on my Not bed, venomous. on my pillow. Ooh, <laughs> see, um, I, the pillow? Right, it, the right. fact that it's over there doesn't bother me at all, but that idea of it being in my bed, oh God. And it was like right before I was going to go to bed, I lifted up, you know how you have your decorative pillows and your sleeping pillows underneath? I lifted yeah. up the decorative pillows and it was freaking oh. hiding underneath there. Oh. Uh, uh, did you scream? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and was very grateful that it happened on a night when I was home. I was just going to say, did two come to your rescue? Yes. And I made him take it because he wouldn't. Um, um, yeah, he killed that one actually because he looked it up. He caught it and then he looked it up and he was like, yeah, this won't kill you, but it will hurt you. What was it? <laughs> I think it was a house brown spider, it's called. Oh, but, yeah. Um, we get yeah. Them. Yeah. They're, yeah, it, they're, that's just a huntsman out there. That, yeah, I get it with the huntsman. I think Matt actually kills those other ones. Because, yeah, yeah. With yeah. the huntsmen, I'm, I, they creep me out. I hate them, but I recognise they won't hurt me. And as long as someone is going to capture it and take it across to the park, I'm good. But when so it's something you say that... say they won't hurt you, and then they run up your arm, and, <laughs> and, and that hurts. My yes. soul. So, <laughs> since one did if you fall have a heart arm, attack out of fear that, that yeah, yeah. that's a different thing that's true but yeah no but um we, we had to come to middle ground basically because he hates killing he's gonna me. show you he's gonna uh -huh. catch it and show you i don't know matt i've already had enough this week please no <laughs> he's, taking he's taking it outside away. he's, taking he's it done away. The, the the book and glass method Throw that's, I'm the, the, I'm the hunt door. and catcher at work so oh no he's coming <laughs> He wants me to identify the spider. Oh God. He's definitely <laughs> a huntsman. Moving away from the spider. Yeah. So talking we'll about things just... that are other than the spider. Yes. I really enjoyed the art. 
Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. Beautiful. Yeah, I really do love the art. Yeah, it's, it's like, work. are you sure it's a huntsman? It's got a really big bum. <laughs> I think it's probably a lady really huntsman then. Sorry, oh, I, I know that took us back on track. It's, I actually don't think it was a huntsman. I think it's a bush spider. We used to get them out in Tamworth as well. They don't hurt though. They're just fast. Right. That's worse. I told it he should throw it <laughs> next door over the fence. If they, if their chickens can eat it then. Yeah. yeah. We had one of their chickens come and visit us today. Oh, oh no. make we were chasing it around the backyard. Go back home, go back home. Uh, it's harder to catch a chicken than it is to catch a huntsman. Going back to the artwork. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yes. Art. Very so good. Artwork. Oh, yes. yes. Art was great. Beautiful, I really liked artwork. the style of it and how it was not too, like, intricate and fancy, but it was still really beautiful. Like, and it was a very distinctive personal style as well. Like, it was nicely done. Yes. And diversity range of bodies. So it's all good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, all like, of her characters are very different. Even the ones in the background seem like Yeah, like the was, was she it? Fed it like, to the trucks, babe. Just random, like, you know, girls in the corridor at school. Like mm. one of them is sort of just a regular blonde girl, but the other one's a bit more pervy. There's and she's wearing glasses and she's got, you know, like not everyone yeah, like is the, just white hair, blonde. You know, white skin, yeah, the one hair. where it's the her her basketball team, like one's um got a I forget oh, the yeah, term scarf. Yeah. Scarf. Um, <laughs> one's got a hair in a bun. She's got dreadlocks. So, um, and there's one with glasses and straight hair. There's one with wavy hair. They're all different, yeah. and they're there's all got a, different skin tones. Their server in the cafe is wearing a yep. head. Just, oh, I noticed yes. that. I remember like, noticing that. There's yep. lots of different types of people. like, mm. it's, And it's, it's not made a big world. deal of. It's just no, there's a bunch like, of different types of people in yeah, this book it's, and it's not a plot point. It's yes. not like, oh, look, this yes. person is wearing a hijab and oh, look at this girl with her, you know, this black girl with braids and, you know, yes. this boy has two different coloured eyes and oh, like nothing's made a big deal of. They're just, no, they're just there. characters that it's are just all how different. They are. Like, yeah. They're all different people that look different, like in the real world, where people look different. Yep. Yes. yep. Was that like, Great. did I did I misread it? Was I forgetting someone? Or Charlie's dad and his partner? Is that right? Yeah, no, that's right. Did they, did they introduce the partner in the first book or was he new for one of these ones? I didn't remember I him. I can't remember. remember. No, so I didn't think so either. I didn't remember him either. I and just, it's not like they introduced them. No, it's just No, like, they were just like, <laughs> yes, like let the kids go away. Take and them we away. We're going to have a weekend weekend. to ourselves. <laughs> I also like that they said, that, go in and ask Sam. And I was like, okay, so that must be Charlie's dad. Yeah. 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 Y
can do anything for love. I know, I know this key cat, cat doesn't want to sit on my lap. She found a bug. I'm like, what the hell are you making noises at? It was a bug. There was a bug. So she's, just, she's just looking for bugs. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I think some people don't care and, and just go with the same one and some, like, are like, no, nope, we have to have a way of distinguishing. Let's just I let's If decide. it was me, I'd have to have a way of distinguishing because it would be like, well, how about you be mum in French and I'd be mum in Dutch and then oh, neither of us are mum <laughs> because you're actually Dutch and I have like, you can scooch, you scooch French. Do you know how to speak French? <laughs> <laughs> Negotiations. Oh, it's not even that exciting. It's just mama. Yeah, that's uh, mama. Is it like? Oh I my my knowledge of French extends to the movie Chocolat. Oh, and that's and that. Dutch. Yeah. That's Dutch, Mama. I'm pretty sure the French version is pretty similar. It is. Mama, is it? It's Mama. Mama. It's Mama. got an N in it, in it. Yeah. Well, I, I know how it's spelled. It. I just don't know how to uh, say it. But it, I mean, in Mama. the end, it sounds pretty Mama. similar. So. Mama. Um, you could always go for something that really does sound different and go Japanese or Kasa. <laughs> yeah, but I can't How do I speak... explain that to people though. <laughs> yeah. Okasa. This is my mom okay. and this is my Okasa. <laughs> oh, that's not exciting. What about Maltese? Turns out I'm a little Maltese. <laughs> Every little very little Maltese. Maltese -er? <laughs> or Welsh. No, there'll be too many letters. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, especially non-pronounced ones. Or that meld into one pronunciation that just makes you go... <laughs> There's no voice for it. That's because it's just Omi. In Maltese, it's Omi. Which is Omi. actually kind of cute. I quite like that, actually. The only problem with having oh, ones that are really sort of more obscure in Australian culture is that it would require an explanation when they're talking to their friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mum. 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 This is me, Mum. Come in. <laughs> Thank you. And I suppose, like, if they're talking about their parents, they would say, oh, my mum's. Like, yeah. even if you, you went by different names, they'd probably still say, oh, my mum's said this. Like. Oh, that's like um, the, um, the guy on um, sex education with his two mums. He just calls each of them mum. Yeah. I guess it's okay when you're in the house because if you're talking to one mum. No, it's when you're like, mum, actually maybe that's the best way to do it. So when they go, mum, the other one, can, you can do so. It's okay, that's you. <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> it's not me, it's you. See, you don't want that's to be actually mom, brilliant. So call out me. Your turn. Yeah, you can just easily even it up instead of like when... My, our kids were real little. Everything was calling for me all the time. And I'd be like, <laughs> don't you want your father for once? No. No. <laughs> um, guys, you want to pull us back to the book? Anything else Sorry. you want to talk about? We're still on the book, right? Sure. Well, between the spiders yes. and, the, and the mum discussion, we... Um, well, but the mum yes. discussion came from the book. It came from... I know. We <laughs> like the same-sex dad's couple that was, again, like the other diversity in the book. It was just, a, it, just it wasn't made a big deal of. It was just like, hello, and I, and that's what I really Hi. liked as well. Rena wants to show you something very important. I just wanted to talk about that. There's Aww. quite a few little little cute things in that in that yeah. third book that you could talk about. Yeah. Oh, and the following panel. Yeah. There were yeah. certain hints in that direction. Aww. I think. Yes, yeah, so I noticed a few hints in that direction too. Which was really nice. Pew yeah, at first when Ariel like... was all jealous of Asta, I was like, oh, because they're like 12 and she's like, I can only have one friend. Yeah. Um, and then it was bigger than that. I was like, oh, thank God, because that's like year three stuff. It, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's realistic. I see that all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Which was especially, at, and I thought it rang true for her character as well because she's like, not had a lot of friends and she's like oh this one person finally is nice to me and I'm like well I want her they would be myself. fairly emotionally immature yeah mm -hmm. no it makes perfect sense um, was a, what's uh, the other girl's name I've forgotten her name I forgot everybody Charlie 
she was like so mature about it and so um, like I want to be your friend and you have to accept that I'm going to have other friends and I'm not mm. going to just give up on you. So just accept it. And she was so great. I loved her so much. But I yes, dear space, look at her. She's like, yes, I want to impress someone. Yes. <laughs> um, I thought that actually it was a really good way of showing that, um, that uh, interpersonal and as well as intrapersonal strength that Charlie had. Like oh, that was she's, yeah. really her major strength. Because um, I'm a grown adult and I would not have handled that situation as maturely as she No did. way. Yeah. But it was nice to see those kind of strengths in a child, like rather than yeah. just being, being turning it into a big fight and a big blow up and stuff. Like she was just like, no, I'm going to deal with this. And because some people are good at that sort of thing. Yeah. And yeah, I really enjoyed that part well, of it. I love that so much as well. Painting Aster's nails. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that reminded me of Xander. Xander. Painted, yeah, it made me think of yeah. Xander because um, yeah. we painted his nails the other day. Actually, we need to clean he's it all up before got, he goes back yeah. to school because Claire's bitten all hers off within two days. He's still got his on. And it was this colour, the same colour I've got on now, which yeah. is so similar. <laughs> like purple nail polish. Oh, yeah. Um, I just like the fact Xander. that that scene, it wasn't even like a question. It was just we're all doing it. Because this is yeah. what you do. You do these kinds of things and it was fun and it's nice. And I actually really liked the way they included, um, what was the other boy's name? Oh, the, the shifter. Birds? Was it uh, Serge? Serge, Serge? Serge. 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 How did I remember that when he's a minor character? And then the major character's name's on my like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. My brain Some is names strange. Stick. Some names stick better because you're I like, I think that's oh. probably what it was because it's an unusual name. And I was like. Yeah. Anyway, um, I like the fact that the, the group didn't just become three. They actually had this fourth who had this other desire and wish that was a bit different. And like, because it, it, it showed that they weren't sort of an isolated group of three. They weren't going to be a Harry Potter trio kind of thing. It was mm -hmm. a an extended group uh, and there was also space within that for them to be um to grow and to become a bigger friend group and things like that especially since his journey was going in the opposite direction mm. yeah it no would one be in very Harry Potter easy because... for them to say oh you don't want to be part of the magic world like charlie isn't either but she's interested in it and yeah. for him to sort of be like, mm, I, I don't really want to be part of this anymore. I yeah. think that was really nice that he was yeah. going through this. Well, I think it was a really good way to sort of show that he's not going to be disconnected from his family because he's made this choice. It was this, their connections are still there. He's still going to be involved. It's just that he's also going to have this other life and he's got a connection through Charlie to start doing that as well. So... And I thought it was good too that they didn't just immediately have the decision to have a boy be a witch just immediately be accepted by the larger family because mm -hmm. that would have felt unrealistic i feel like yeah she says about a book with magic in it <laughs> no but you need to but that's, that's accepted in the world that's the that's but the it thing is a that big metaphor with, yeah yeah and good fantasy and good sci-fi that's where like it's like okay here's a world that's different but you need to have a realism in character interactions because that's what grounds the book and yeah. and that's where that's what separates the good sci-fi and the good fantasy from the crap is that they can recognize that yes this world has this and it has magic and it has um you know science you know technology that doesn't exist but it has a grounding in character mm. that feels real like you look at something like the expanse the characters feel real and it feels like how people would really react in certain situations and stuff. And that's why it's good. And yeah. it's when the sci-fi and the fantasy is very, you know, they forget about the character that I don't enjoy it. I'm sure some people don't care about that, but I do. And I think feel like the difference between, so one of the things I have a pet peeve about is when people say, Oh, girls can't do that because, you know, it's it's a story set in the past. And it's like, yeah, but it's a story set in the past with dragons. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's not, not the same world. 
yeah, it's not the same world. Yeah, but I think in, in this unless case, you're telling like a historically accurate story, then it's fine. You can have your characters do whatever you want. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. Whereas in this case, I felt like it worked not because there was magic, um, magic, um, because the the beginning of the story, the first part of the story, was about the challenge, <coughs> the fact that he wasn't being accepted. So the yes. magic didn't undermine that element. Whereas yes. if that hadn't been the first part of the story, it would have felt like more like, well, why is this a problem? <laughs> yeah, that was grounded right from the beginning as part of the world that, yeah. you know, they have this kind of insular <laughs> culture and in that culture it's very, the, the gender roles are very well defined of what you're supposed to do. Exactly. And it, and it worked, I think, as well because they were such an insular culture and they did have this, like, tight-knit community that did things their way kind of thing and they weren't mm. affected much by what the outside world was doing. I think that also made sense. Yeah, definitely. It was really good world building for a middle school reader, I thought. Hmm. Yeah. So is it the kind of book that you could see like doing a bit of a time jump ahead and then have the, like the next series be for an older age group? I think I could see a lot of those sorts of ideas happening from this book, but I get the feeling from both Mo Molly and um, Noelle Stevenson that they kind of enjoy moving on to the next project. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I want more Nimona. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go the shark. Keep waiting. It's exactly that kind of thing. That's exactly what I mean. If you want not more Nimona, but without Nimona, you need to watch She-Ra because you're yeah. going to get that vibe from it. She-Ra. I have been watching Shira. That doesn't mean that I don't want more Nimona. I still want more Nimona as well. I'm just saying this is where you can get that feel from. That's what I mean. Like, I will definitely read. Like, I now need to go out and get, um, my library's got the, um, what's it called? Strong something protagonist. That's Strong also, female protagonist. That's it. Yep. I was like, this I, one. one. Yeah, that one. This one. one. Yeah. <laughs> I, need to get them from well, I haven't seen again. those. Yeah. I was actually yeah. thinking, do we want to make. through that one. I picked that one up. I was thinking, do we want to make those um, our next casual read sort of thing down the yeah. track sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are, are the, they, we are in the first one, so yeah. What age level would you say those are? Can Have you read them? Uh, older, I'd say. Older, right, yeah. okay. So not a I can buy it for my school library one. No, okay. I'd say probably like teens, maybe like... early high school. Yeah. Right, teens. Yeah. I do have to be careful because there's some in that kind of, in between area like there's a couple that I've bought that I've gone mm, I'm going to restrict it to just the upper school and there's like the witch boy ones I'm not going to restrict at all I think they're fine for yeah I mean the kids that are too probably too young for it are probably also not really um like their reading level's not there anyway so mm, yeah like, like I, don't I feel think... like if you're I feel like if the kid is at the reading level where they could read it I feel like it's not too young for them. Yeah. yeah. Comicsology yeah. say it's 15 plus. Yeah. But, you know, they're probably erring on the side of caution there. Yeah. I tend to not... these yeah. books or... I, no, no. Yeah. Strong for these For the strong female protagonists. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. For which yeah. boy? I was talking sorry, about. Oh, sorry. Which boy? Oh, sorry. Boy? I was like, um, yeah, really? for for um anything that's, a, that's recommended for 12 and up, I don't buy for the library because I feel like I can't justify it. Like if a parent says... You know, I disagree with what's in this book. I can sh at least show, well, the publisher recommends it for age eight, which we have at our school. And mm. you, you know, then I can kind of say, well, you know, you may, you're welcome to make decisions about your own children. That doesn't mean I should restrict the book for every child. Yeah. When it's 12 and above, and we don't have children of that age at our school, it's harder to, you can't really justify it and say, it's, I had a good yeah. reason to buy this, you know? So. All right, so thinking logistics. Even though they ask for stuff. Um, I right. have got scheduled for us a general hangout in between. So we've got um, to be taught if fortunate uh, as our next sort of in-between hangout, which is in, oh, well, calendar, what are you doing? What are you doing? Go back. Thank you very much. Uh, which is, why is nothing from Facebook showing up? 
Where's all my Facebook stuff? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I did. I was playing with that. There it is. I was doing stuff with my calendar because I had to update things. So yeah, there we go. I turned it off. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that's scheduled for the beginning of February, but at the beginning of March, we've got a general hang hangout scheduled, which I could replace for doing strong, strong female protagonist. Alternatively, we could push it through till May, which was when I would have scheduled the next general hangout. Um, I'm happy with either. I, I just had a look. My library doesn't have it. Well, um, how about... How about we, we go for May? It if you wanted to borrow it from us. Okay. That's a good excuse for us to have to get together again. Oh, um, no, I I'm have to see you again. <laughs> I'm going to suggest we'll go for May then because um, there hasn't been a general hangout for a while and it gives an opportunity for people who like jazz and stuff who haven't been in for a while to come. Yeah, um, that's yeah. a good point. Yep. All right, I'll schedule that for May. And that means we've got plenty of time to for people to grab copies and do all of that sort of jazz too. Do keep in mind though, for those people who want to do saga, I'm scheduling that for June. That's a lot of I reading. Do, I do need to yeah. catch up. I can't remember what I was up to. I you did not so get long. to the end. I can tell you that. I know that. <laughs> the end, there's an five. end. Is it? Does it have an actual end? No, no, no. It's on hiatus. It's oh yeah, it's on hiatus, which has made it very easy for us to have like a sort of a dead point at the moment. If um, you could have said it's finished and I can just read it and get an ending, that would have motivated no. me a lot more. Maybe. Um, no. I have a feeling I scheduled it for number nine. I've only been at number eight though, so I'm curious as to whether or not that's the case. Sorry, going to check. So no number nine is out. So I'm pretty sure I can get it for the last week. Number nine is out. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's say number nine. Oh, yeah, nine is definitely out. Of okay. Well, let's say nine then because that means we can, um, we'll be fully up to date for whatever the high hiatus is and we can make a call whether or not we want to continue after that stage. Yeah, as it's testament to how terrible my library is for um, graphic novels that they don't have that either. Mm. When you say your library, oh, no, you mean they do. Ipswich they... Library. Yes. Not. Your school library? No. Yeah. Oh, obviously, I don't have saga in my school. <laughs> 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 oh, so they do. They oh, have wow. up. This so suitable for an eight-year-old? No. Oh, no I, I even erred on the side of not buying it for my 17-year-old sister. Yeah, yeah I, was I, was say, like, I wouldn't even have it in the mm, high school library. I feel yeah. like it's the kind of thing that can be read by that age group but probably needs to be chosen by that person yeah. so that they know what they're getting into rather than given to them. I just remember bringing it to university and not realising um, what was in it. <laughs> you know, nudity. Um, I think the first thing that shocked me, if I remember, was there was a big troll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, right. yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Was it the bull sack and bull yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Was it. it was everything. <laughs> <I> went, what? <laughs> Anyway, I was reading that and I was around people. And so, <laughs> it's all right. Some of that's us why have, I remember it. <laughs> some of us have read Sunstone on the train too. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm actually thinking I might even end up doing a full reread or at least go back to after the mm. initial abduction of, I can't even remember her name, but the child. My, my <laughs> library has up to volume five. Oof. We've got all of them on no, I was curious because I'm like, this is a really popular graphic novel. If, if they don't really have much of that, then it will show that I've got no hope, basically. But they've got quite a few. They've got Paper Girls up to number five as well, okay. which is interesting. Because hmm. I wouldn't have thought the Girls was as popular as Saga. Hmm. But, like, every time I've actually gone into the library, they've had pretty much nothing. So, I've seen mine's got up to eight that I've seen so far. I don't know if they've got nine. Oh, wait, no, that's a different saga. I just okay. Yeah, they've got up to eight, but I own up to eight, so that's fine. Oh, Sorry, but I need to log in and I don't know what my login is. Um, guys, are we done? Should I stop the recording? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. 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 See ya.